I, yeah, like, the ones where I can like blow things up. Like, I was thinking that, of like Starfire and all that. I'm like, that might yeah. be risky. I'm an Aries. Like that might be like aggressively yeah. like not responsible. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to Earth-9 in the DC multiverse with three incredibly talented performers from the cast of Titans. So without further ado, let's head on down to the Titans Tower and see who we find. Our first guest is an actress and musician whose credits include The Transcendence, Six, and Richard Linkletter's landmark film, Boyhood. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Commissioner Barbara Gordon. Please welcome Savannah Welch. Hello. Hello. How are you, Savannah? I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? I am well. Everything is good in your corner of the world? Oh, yeah. Good. We uh, we just returned home from Peru, where we were for a, a, a convention, a Comic-Con, um, last week. And we just returned home yesterday. So we're we're recovering. Oh, my goodness. Well, absolutely glad to have you here on our virtual stage. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And next, he is an actor whose credits include Game of Silence, Girl Meets World, and Do Not Reply. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Jason Todd, formerly known as Robin, now known as Red Hood. Please welcome Curran Walters. Hello. Hey, hey. <laughs> He's making an entrance. How you doing, boss? Good. I forgot my ring walk. I, uh, wanted, to, I wanted to do music and all that stuff. What, but I'm good. Uh, How you doing? I am well down here. Uh, I understand that you're in uh, the always curiously interesting Vegas. Yes, visiting some family. So yeah, fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Indeed it is. Well, glad to have you here, boss. Everything is good in your part of the world? Yes, sir. Everything's great. How are you? I said doing well here down here in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, awesome. Where it's, yeah, it hasn't rained as often as it usually does. So okay. The Florida, the Florida Board of Tourism doesn't want Do you enjoy the rain or do you not enjoy the rain? Mm, I enjoy the rain as long as I don't have to drive in it. Yeah, right. Especially in Florida. Yeah, the lake is <laughs> happening. I'm excited. Yes, absolutely. And I'm excited for our next guest. She is an actress whose roles include Other Space, Shots Fired, and The Man in the High Castle. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Donna Troy, better known as Wonder Girl. Please welcome Connor Leslie. Woo, 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 woo. Hey, jazz hands. Like, hey. Hey. Connor, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I am doing well, doing well. How are you in your corner of the world? I'm great. I'm in New York City. I'm home. This is my my home city. Um, and I haven't been like stationary here in so long because we were filming in Toronto for so many months. So I'm just happy to be here. And it's all I'm very fun. jealous that you're in New York, Connor. Be jealous. Everyone should be very jealous. jealous. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, friends, thank you all for joining us here today on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our team is going through the chat room right now, pulling out the questions for us. In the meantime, I'd just like to throw this out for each of you. What would you consider to be the craziest day you had on the Titan set? Oh. One crazy day? Only one? Oh, I know, I know. You know. <laughs> that is impossible. Well, uh, again, any any TV show is fraught with, uh, uh, let's say, uh, some minor peril. But any show involving special effects, special costuming, those that those yeah those things are tripled so they they add up um yes. i'm processing all the crazy moments <laughs> there's a lot of in the comic book show the cra it's more there's of like lot. pick a crazy month or i don't know like every I mean, one that stands out for me was brenton and i i think we're up from to like 5 a.m doing a fight scene and we did yeah. everything like the stunt doubles parts and everything and then we did our part last and we yeah. were like dead tired. And that was like, that was a pretty crazy moment on set. And it was the, yeah. the big fight with uh, Nightwing and, and Red Hood and like the street. So, yeah. yeah. I I would say um, the sentence, a fight scene at 5 a.m. sums up like most fight scenes because somehow they just get <laughs> thrown in. But um, it, I think the crazy, one of the craziest ones that sticks out in my head was the uh, season two finale when we did the carnival and it was me and Superboy, um, sweet Josh Orphan. And so I remember we were filming, we did that also like at 5.15 and we had to make that stunt where we like go head to head by the time the sun came up because for anyone watching, when we're shooting these exterior night scenes, we're daylight dependent, we call it on set. So you have to get it all in before the sun comes up or it's not 
continuity accurate. So that scene was crazy because we had the carnival and we had weather and we had like do this crazy stunt in two takes or whatever it was. And it all happened in a blur and I barely remember it. No pressure at all. No pressure. No pressure. You're like you can do this. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah 20 minutes, but hey. <laughs> um, so that was definitely one of the craziest days. It was, and we had the carnival. So there's lots of extras. It was wild, but fun. Ooh, I'm sorry. I thought you were supposed to block that. Oh. Yeah. I was like, well, that's just not my face. I'm just, <laughs> just like, I don't have some ice. Yeah. Uh, choreography. <laughs> you learn it real fast or, real not, never, or not at all. Fast, or it will learn you. <laughs> yes. That's a good way. Very good way of putting it. Uh, Savannah, how about you? Yeah, I mean, my story is probably exactly the same yeah. as these yeah. guys. It, it was the fight scene, the fight scene with Lady Vic, probably yeah. that one, um, in the alley, 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, our stuff was at the very last, you know, part of the day. Um, they got most of most of the stunt double um, stuff coverage. Mm -hmm. Um, and then and then got all of our stuff at the end, um, for the most part. Uh, one of the stunt doubles, um, um, Orfe, was injured like right towards the end of the Not night. Injury. Orfe's just the best. Or Orfe's amazing. She's Orfe's amazing. Um, she was a stunt double for um, for the for the Lady Vic character, and they decided at the last minute. And this is when like everybody's exhausted in the crew, and everybody's just tired and maybe not making the most sound decisions. Um, and they just decided to add a shot. Um, and it was like an over the, the shoulder shot of my reaction. Um, and so Orfe did the, I, I did a move and Orfe was supposed to react and she just went back and like whacked her face on the camera and, um, or her head. And we just like watched this egg, you know, swell. Oh. Our stunt team um, takes all the, heavy hits yes yeah. um, and of course she just like you know maybe sat down for five minutes and then got back up and kept going um they're but, made of something else <laughs> yeah yeah so that was um and it was of course one of the most frigid nights in toronto that winter and um and they have a snow machine blowing on us which is just additional cold air and so <laughs> so um you know, and, and I was in a wheelchair. So we had all, it was like rigged with all kinds of stuff to like yeah. pull it back. And we're in a bumpy alleyway. And um, there was, there were many, many things like the stars had to align in order for these shots to, yeah. to work. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's showbiz. <laughs> yep. you never know when you watch it. She's just I like, love it. those batons, yeah. like it's nothing. <laughs> it makes it fun. That part, was, that part was easy. I can wave stuff around like it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there you go. Well, thank you for indulging in my capricious curiosity. We're good to go on our audience questions. So I say we go ahead and roll our first one. And this comes from Anne, who would like to know, were any of you fans of the Teen Titans cartoons or comics before joining the show? Thanks for the question, Anne. Um, I wasn't however i was familiar with it because i have a nine-year-old son who watched the show um uh my son is named charlie and he would educate me on all of the teen titans stuff i can't say that i ever sat down and really watched it with him um but that's my that's my answer i was familiar with it but i can't i can't claim sure. to be because I, I never invested time I um I feel like anyone who's watched anything I've said in this response because it's been asked a couple times since I've played Donna is that I I didn't but my younger I have two younger brothers and they're both comic book fans but one in particular Jack is a big <laughs> comic book fan uh, so he read all of them he loves all the universes and he really educated me on it and the comics and the show and so when I got the part he was like the, one of the first people I called and he just tried to in, in you know send me all the information at once and that was kind of my education that must have been a bewildering conversation because the comic book history of Donna Troy is hmm. one of the most convoluted. Yep. Uh, yeah, I learned that after I joined. I was like, wow, yeah. here we go. How do you do that? Then after Crisis of Infinite Earth, she got regular. Then she was Troya, and then that Troya worked for a while, and then she went back to the 
I feel like a lot of comic book characters, what I've learned in the last few years, they all have obviously different iterations, but of all of them, and I'm not just saying this as playing her, it is one of the most convoluted, confusing, all over the map. One, I'm like, and and what's crazy is there's so much good source material in like so many different pockets, and I'm like, why are we why are we messing her up like this, guys? Like, with, like just streamline it a little bit because she's so cool and incredible, and all of the things that made me want to sign on to play her. But uh, the the source material, I remember just being very overwhelmed and being like, what did I just sign on to do, which version are people expecting? How am I gonna at all uh, reach a version that's somewhat resembling yeah. who this character is? Um, so I kind of just turned to a, a uh, character traits that seem to be consistent throughout sure. all of them and what we were writing and hope for the best. <laughs> and, 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 I, I, and I say this with, with, with all your characters in the show overall, I think they, they got to the core of the characters mm -hmm. and they, they, they made the choice. We're going to go to sort of this level of realism mm -hmm. and okay, mm -hmm. Garfield's going to have green hair. He's not going to have mm -hmm. green skin. And it was consistent across the board. And I think that's what makes it a really, yeah. really good adaption. And that's yeah. what it always is. It's uh, to me, it's always about. It's not about the canon. It's about the character. Getting the mm -hmm. characters well right. Yes, yeah. well Donna put. is right. Barbara Gordon, absolutely on point. I totally believe in everything she would do. Again, in the Oracle mode and in, in her wheelchair mode. And yes, rising up in her way, taking your father's place and honoring the legacy. And of course, Jason, of course, is another one who's got a bit of a walk wacky comic book history. <laughs> <laughs> not like as bad as Donna. <laughs> no, I no, got that. No, definitely not. <laughs> um, yeah, I, to be honest, when I when I first found out I, I booked the role of Jason Todd, I knew nothing. I knew absolutely nothing. So I feel like I've answered the question a million times. I'm just I'm, I'm rewiring my brain. Um, I went out and I bought literally every comic book um, I could find on Jason Todd. I watched Under the Red Hood probably 150 times since then. Um, so yeah, I just did my research and I did my thing and, you know, you can't, you can't put too much pressure on yourself, but you got to know that this is a character that, you know, people have been waiting for, for 30, 40 years, like with all of us, you know, so, yeah. you know, you have that little sense of pressure, but you got to just do your thing. And that's what I did. And here we are. Yeah, right and and <laughs> you're, you, and, and you are the first live action Jason Todd we've ever yes, had. Sir. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I can really see that. It's but again, fun. It's, it's it's been a dream come true. I enjoy it very much. Yeah, and I and I, again, I will say this for all and your castmates, you've all done these characters very very well. Thank you so I, much. I really, I really, I, th I thank you for your talents, and I th I thank you for professionalism, and I thank you all for the performances that you brought to these characters. Thank really, you. that means a lot. Thank you, thank absolutely. You. And Anne, thank you. That was a great question thank to start us off with. Great hey, questions. what do we have next from Joshua? Joshua. Ooh, Joshua. The Funniest memory from behind the scenes. Is this Josh secretly hey, telling are... us a story about Josh? Uh -huh. <laughs> that is something our our Josh Superboy. Yes, do. totally. <laughs> funniest. Memory. Hmm. I gotta say anything with Alan. <laughs> I mean, anything with Alan just makes me crack up. I got to work with Alan one day. It's not fair. Uh, oh, oh, he's so just like to work with, and he's so fun. Um, so makes fun. It just always having a good time. Um, God, this is so much pressure when you get these questions because now it's been uh, either like even if it's a season like Savannah, like that's a lot of 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 months and days to to find one funny moment, and for sure. uh, for me like three seasons. I'm just trying yeah. to I'm thinking yeah. it. I have like now I know now to like take notes. That's a great point. We've now shooting like be like. This was a really funny moment. This was but the most challenging, you know, I've gotten that question. What was the most challenging yeah. to shoot? Yeah. Um, um, I've had some funny moments with Brenton just because, and I don't even know if I can think of a funniest moment, but we really do have like a brother, sister kind of like nagging each other uh, joy to working with our, our scenes together. But um, I can't think of like a, a funniest moment. I'm normally like I enjoy doing like little pranks normally, but I wouldn't do that on our show because it's such a, a machine that I was like, not time for funny business. We got like ten thousand things to do at once. Yes. But um, some I, sets, some foster that. 
Yeah. And some can and some, and some can't. Just were like, what are you doing? Like if I knew there was a lot of moments where I was like, this would be funny, but they'd be like, that just costs us a lot of money. Why we're wasting yeah. it. But, um, I would say to Current's right. point, maybe it's because it's fresh in my mind, but when Alan and I and uh Jay, who plays Tim Drake, did the uh Underworld episode, I had a lot of fun because I was just like hanging out with those two and they were such a joy and we were just silly and we were aware that we were being silly and, you know, having fun. And uh, it was a joyful episode, but I, I, I'll, if I think of the funniest moment before this is end, I'll. No worries. No worries. Just I also thought of one season two. It's mm -hmm. off topic, but it was at the rap party. <laughs> I know how competitive Brenton was until then. <laughs> so competitive. And he started like pulling out all these ping pong skills out of nowhere. Yes. Was, like we had like a little tournament together and he kept winning and winning. And I don't know why that was so funny to me because I've never seen that side of Brenton and it was like, amazing. That it was, was awesome. Funny. Do you remember that, Connor? Yeah, I do. There's a spin in Toronto. If there's yes. any Canadians yeah. out there, um, sadly, we filmed season three in a pandemic, so we didn't get to go any of to any of these fun spots because it was all shut down. But season two, yeah. uh, we did the rap party at at, at spin we just played ping pong and then i think that they wanted us to leave because we were just throwing <laughs> ping pong balls at each other <laughs> <laughs> like all right time to get out <laughs> yeah that was fun that was there, awesome. there you go joshua great question thank you and what do we have next from kevin if you could have any of the abilities or powers from titans not necessarily your own but any that do you experience what would you choose and what would you use it for Loaded. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I, I feel like I would be Jericho. Well, does okay. he count as Titan? Does Jericho count? He was on our show and I just love Cello. But sure. He counts. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any character on the show, yeah. I don't know. He just got to like slip into other people's like an experience walk in their shoes do you remember that like you just like jump there. that that was actually a fun day that was a funny moment it's involving alan curran so it's like course, but he had to like dance and be silly and uh and jericho like you know possesses his body or, or whatever and that was yeah. so fun to watch i was like that would be so cool because i don't know anything where you could be like kind of anonymous i'm i'm always wanting like invisibility i don't think yeah. anyone on our show has invisibility um and uh, I think, yeah, that would be, that would be really cool. I also, I love, I love Donna. I, I would love to fly. I haven't gotten to fly, but. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say I, I'd love to fly. Yeah, if I could, I, I guess fly. I would still love to be her, but we just haven't, she hasn't really flown uh, yet, but. um. Is that, a, is that a Donna Troy um, <laughs> power, superpower? Fly. She can, she can fly, girl. Fly, I need mean, to fly. I don't questions know if anyone has me. These are questions. I would like to tell you. I think that would be pretty cool. It'd be so cool. Yeah. But you don't have to worry about traffic. No. <laughs> oh, but why didn't she just fly over to Gotham? All right, be there in a second. Yeah. <laughs> that would be fun. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think like what all the powers were. I mean, I definitely I I mean, yeah, like, the ones where I can like blow things up. Like, I was thinking that, of like Starfire and all that. I'm like, that yeah. might be risky. I'm an Aries. Like that might be like aggressively yeah. like not responsible. Yeah. <laughs> She's so great. I love Starfire, but I was like, I don't think I should have have those powers. No, nobody should give me the power to blow things up. <laughs> um, I don't know. Can somebody time travel? Is it, do people time travel on our show? I mean, not really. I guess Raven kind of can like show up places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like yeah. that idea of just being able to like show up somewhere. Portal teleportation. Yeah. 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 There you or go. I would take Superboy's power so I could become like half Amazon, half Kryptonian, half yeah. like, or a third, a third, a third, because he's, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, that'd be, that would be dangerous. That's like a lot of. A lot of supers in one in one body. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely indeed. And there you have it, Kevin. Great question. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. And what do we have next from Jeremy? <laughs> ah, uh, I'll rephrase this. Uh, have you found yourself in possession of anything from uh -huh. the Titans set? I tried to get this sword from season three and <laughs> did not succeed. I tried with. Everything in me. I have boots from Donna's season one outfit. 
I don't know if that's okay. not a, it's not a cool, um, you know, it's not one of her super, I don't have her lasso and all that stuff they take. They, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't really like, I'm, I would never steal anything. I don't like have, I'm not that cool or whatever to like get away with that. Um, but I did, I like begged for that sword and they were like, they said, no, I was like, where is it going to go? Just like, <laughs> yeah. the rubber. I love you. One of them. Um, I got nothing, but I've got her season one boots. <laughs> so that's what I'm um, I have a Gotham license plate. What? What? Yeah, that's cool. you get that? Yeah. Yeah. Season three. Woohoo! Whatever. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. That was, that's smart because there's like a lot of them. I learned so from, our, from our props department. They're like, you got to ask for something that's like, yeah. there's know, a not a sword. <laughs> and I was like, well, no, but that there were just so many of them. It's like, all right. Yeah. yeah. There was a bunch because we had them all in like a, the cabs. In so that's what I did. And yeah. now I'm very thankful I got it. Yeah, I yeah I didn't get anything from the set per se. Same as Connor, I got like wardrobe items. They gave me a couple of um, Barbara Gordon's really like slick suit jackets. That's amazing. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I had a such. I loved my jacket. It's I know. Amazing. I mean, not that I ever wear suit jackets. I don't I'm gonna like plant myself places where I, it makes sense to wear a suit jacket. Back to New York oh, and yeah. you can wear it. Okay. Yep. Anything here. Um, so I've got a couple of those, and then I have my purple Chuck Taylors that I wore from my fight scene. I love them. Okay. And um, nice. they gave those to me. Well, at first they were red, and I said, "I think these." They were. They were like, "How do these fit?" Like it was during the fitting. I was like, "I think, I think that she would she would go purple, like you know, mm -hmm. to her Batgirl days." Yeah. So I got purple, purple tops, and they gave those to me. That's that's. That was that was a that was a great that was a great choice. I absolutely agree. Very right, well done. I think uh, a few months ago, uh, one of the greatest of those stories, actor William Daniels said that uh, he at the end of the season he would take all of his old clothes on the last day and switch them out with the wardrobe. So he'd walk out with a whole season's worth of wardrobe. <laughs> I thought that was the most savage that was the most savage burn I've that ever is heard. Commitment. You've brought all of your wow, that's commitment. He would just, he'd say, all his old clothes, he would switch out for all the nice new ones they get, they had from that season. Yeah. That like, That's not uh, allowed on Titans. No. Yeah, it'd be, be a little difficult to pull that one. Very apart, difficult. Indeed. So, mm -hmm. it, and there you have it, Jeremy. Thank you. Good one. And what do we have next? From Claudia. Is there anyone that you haven't had scenes with that you'd like to, or anyone you wish you've had more scenes Thanks, with? Savannah. Yeah. Savannah and Connor. We so didn't get any. I was so mad. Actually, Savannah was there on my last last day of filming. Yeah. Um, uh, it was the scene where uh, uh, Dick is talking to Barbara, how he's leaving, and then Donna walks in and she's like, you asked her to come with you, didn't you? And that was... It, so that scene that Dick and Donna have at the end, uh, they were filming their scene as well. So Savannah was on set on my last day. We were in the chairs together um, and talking, but we didn't get any scenes together. And I will always be sad about that. Yeah. The closest we got was like we were in the background of each other's. Yeah. Other yeah. yeah. So I would have loved to have scenes with you. And then also you, Curran. We've, I know. Literally nothing. Not a single one. We've had Laura and I had some the first couple seasons, but... Not much. Not a lot. I would. You're we like standing there with our eyes like glowing dark. Or, and or like, I'm like hovering <laughs> over you like a. Whole yeah, day. we're like. <laughs> I remember that day. It was so cold. We had to like fly yeah. back in our backs. Oh my god, that was yeah. funny. It's you know it's interesting because we're an ensemble cast and so there's a lot of days, uh, more so in seasons one and two, um, where everyone was in the room a lot. In season two, we're all in Titans Tower. Everyone's like in the room, but not interacting like one-on-one. -on -one. Um, a one-on-one -on -one scene is with only a few people. And then season three, because of, of COVID, we kind of were in pot, like yeah. filming pods. So it's like everyone had, you know, I'm with Jay a lot. So like, it was kind of a, uh, a way we were broken up. But season two was like that current where like, we'd have like these big group scenes. So I'd like, we'd see each other at work, but there was no like heart to heart moment. Like I'd consider a scene with someone where you're like having a yeah. dialogue. With there them. was never, you know. yeah, there was none of that. It was just like being like, accusing you yeah of in titan yeah. tower and storming off and then yeah i guess one one off. this season where you just stood over me yeah but again those don't count i always feel no. 
I want you to have up, like two minutes like hey Karen and then you do it and I'm like all right I'm like, don't do it, you're good <laughs> but, <I'm on> her. <laughs> um, but uh but I I always uh any show I've been on I've always just felt like I want to have it a good scene with at least every other character because it makes it such a full fleshed out uh, show, I think, uh, combining people that you wouldn't normally expect. So, you know, oh, yeah. you know, obviously uh, Dick and Donna would have a scene together, but it was nice this year to have like scenes with Jay and Alan, which I didn't get to do with, uh, on season two. And then I didn't have any with, uh, you know, Don this season, but I had some, you know, with, you know, Tegan plays Raven, like it, it, they mix it up a bit, but there's always like one or two people you didn't get to have a, a work moment with. Yeah, understandable. There you yeah. go, Claudia. Great um, question. Thanks, Claudia. Uh, hey, what do we have next? From Christy. Ah, oh, this is a fandom crossover. Oh. Paul, where's the graphic? <laughs> This question, yeah, this question comes up so often we have a graphic for it. So what <laughs> fandom outside of the DC universe would you like to see have a crossover with your version of Titans? That's and when we say fandom, help. it could be okay. Marvel, Star Wars, Shakespeare, the New York Mets. What? That's such a big question. Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. I, 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 that's amazing. Um, I think that would be pretty sick. I mean, like, here's the thing is like, the question should be, what do I think would like maybe be a good blend? And then like the inner nerd is like thinking of like, just all the Lord of the Rings books and fantasy novels I read as a kid and like wanting to just be part of that world or something sci-fi. Um, Spider-Man. I listen. Spider-Man. Spider-Man's crossing over with Spider-Man. And Jason Todd collab. No, nothing against them. My brothers love <laughs> Spider-Man, but I'm like, Spider-Man is Spider-Manning over here. I love um, it. What fandom? Wow, that's such a great question. No, it's, it's a massive question, you know. Um, what would be very unexpected even? I know. Savannah and I are here like, like, don't say Star Wars. Don't say, like, all the obvious. I'm thinking of all my really favorite cool ones. Um, think. Harry Potter? I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I think, Witches, I, wizards. Um, that'd be pretty dope. Um, yeah, you know they they'd be they'd be real trepidatious around uh, Raven. And, well, I was gonna, uh, mom, yeah. the mom in me was like, "Those Harry Potter kids do not need to come to Gotham. That that can't happen. Right. That's that's aggressive. You're right. Um, that's, that's unsafe. Yeah, got <laughs> Gotham. One Gotham villain gets a hold of one wand and is like, "Hmm, uh -oh. Oh, how boy, does this bad. work? What is what? What did you say? Expelleratus? You oh, mean? I mean, Star I Wars know. would be really really cool." Star Wars would be cool. Lord I of mean, the of course that would be yeah. so cool. I was yeah. a big Lord of the Rings fan as a kid. Like, read The Hobbit, read all the books. Like, was a big, mm -hmm. I had a very big opinion when I heard Peter Jackson was making a movie and I was like 12. I don't know who I thought it was. Um, so anything in that realm, that fantasy realm, I would A, love to be a part of, but B, if, if I could blend it with ours, I think that'd be. Yeah. Uh, cool. What about, like, comedy? What about, like, like, you know, all those Christopher Guest, like, mockumentary kind of style. Like, what if Christopher Guest did, like, a Titans? What if Ghostbusters <laughs> and Titans? <laughs> like, what about, like, an Adam Sandler Happy Gilmore? <laughs> yeah, whatever. whatever. I, 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 I really like the Christopher Guest uh, improv movie idea. Christopher Guest with, with in Gotham. Yes, it'd be like we all do in Gotham. Be as stereotypical as, as possible. Um, yeah, just... Just, 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 just putting in there your characters. Okay, at the end of this, you got to decide you're gonna pick the pink drapes, and you got two minutes. Yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> that that's how that's how they work. They tell he tells the actors this is what needs to happen. This yeah. is your time, and we'll just do twenty or thirty versions. That is amazing. Yeah, that we don't have time for that. I tried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me too. A lot of times he said no. <laughs> um, let's see. SNL, Titans on SNL. Wow. That now we're going all over the place. But. No, no. Alan, then. Alan would do great on SNL. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no. These are all good. I, uh, it happened once in the, in, the, in the 80s. Uh, DC and Marvel used to be on friendlier terms. So they did do an X-Men Teen Titans crossover. Wow. On special one cool. shot. Why do we got to, like, have these? My, my brother, Jack, the one I mentioned, he loves both 
for all the comic book fans out there, he's a big Marvel and DC like fan. He's like, I just love comics. Like, he's like, I don't know. And of course, he does have his own, also his own very strong opinions on all all the things as well. But he's just always like, I love all of it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good stuff. And let's roll another one. Hey, this is gonna come from Jack. What's the one thing that you've taken away from your characters? Hmm. Mm. That's a tricky question. Yes, yes. Very actor studio question. My brain's uh, working right now. Yeah, good question, Jack. Great question, Jack. I would laugh if that was my brother. Jack. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm doing this, so. Um, I think uh, something I took away, actually, it was uh, season one. There's a scene with... Um, Dick and Donna, and it's actually the first time you meet her, and she's explaining to him, he's all self-tormented, Dick, being like, oh, I burned the suit. <laughs> like, how did you escape it? And she's like, I didn't quit being Wonder Girl. I just knew I could do better being Donna Troy. And it was a really cool thing about that is realizing like how, I mean, as a, as a woman, how multidimensional women are and that they're kind of, um, and maybe as for the superhero in her, kind of like, put under one title and you're one thing and you're just this and you're this like image or pedestal that you're living on and you're not you're many different things and you can be both of these things you can be strong and also a vulnerable human and I think that's what makes her so interesting because she's not fully Amazon and she's not fully human and that was a really nice takeaway which was just kind of like you don't actually have to give up being this strength and this kind of thing to also be doing good in the world um you don't yeah. have to be on like level 1000 to be making a difference like you know you don't have to impact i mean great if you can you know impact 10,000 or thousands of people but if you do help one person it's just as impactful it's like a drop in the ocean so yeah. um i remember reading that and feeling like that was a really important lesson takeaway for myself or any other women or people out there. Yeah. Oh, I guess good. all I learned is that when things are going bad, run away and become a supervillain. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't know what else I learned. <laughs> Go punch a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. Christ. There's so fight. many, there's so many like beautiful, broad life lessons in your character story. This I know. Is so many. So that's, that's the main many. one I can think of right now. I'm in I'm in the red hood mindset. Moral I not be after season three. Yeah. Um, yeah, but there is so many good ones. I'm trying to think. Stay true to your moral compass. Always. I yeah. learned that's what I took away from your character story. Yeah. There you go. Let me think. Let me think. Um, I mean, I, you know, I will say the, um, um, this is a kind of, I don't want to say vague, but it is a bit broad. It's just in Barbara's story that, um, when she became disabled, I mean, really her superpower has always been her intelligence mm -hmm. and, um, and that there's, she, there's still so much, um, worth, you know, that she didn't, she didn't, she didn't allow it to stop or limit her in terms of what she felt she could accomplish or what her, you know, how she can use her superpower for good. And that's like her intelligence and her heart, you know, and how much she, cares and is committed to the citizens of Gotham and so forth. And um, so I would say the takeaway just that, you know, um, having a disability doesn't have to, um, it doesn't have to limit you. It just changes the way that you show up in the world. You know, mm -hmm. she can no longer be that girl, but now she can be this or Oracle or whatever, the commissioner. And, um, and, and one thing that I would say that really influenced me and, and it was it was impactful was just the little bit of time that I did spend in a chair. Um, I, I walked away from that experience really having more of an awareness about accessibility in the world. And just, you know, I, I'll, I'll say, I mean, I'll admit like walking around Toronto, just n noticing how um, how many places really are not accessible for people who are in chairs. And that's just something that I wouldn't have paid attention to or maybe noticed without having um, that experience. So that was a takeaway. Um, it's just having having more of a, an awareness about that. Is, even though I, I know that that's probably um, just like 
on the surface of what that reality is. Um, yeah. Who really That's are. Awesome, but, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very well spoken. Very well spoken. So, yeah. So, Curran, you're able to think of one or? <laughs> I like the supervillain thing personally. <laughs> hey, that's mine right now. You can see it's okay. Okay to stick to that. And uh, then, yeah, that's mine. Um, no. Then ask yourself, am I happy as a supervillain? Do I really want to yeah, be? Am I happy? Is it? Family? Yeah. Family. I guess for me, it's just like there's no. The, I, I guess what I've learned from my character, especially like now being like you know listening to Crane the whole season three and and, and whatnot. Um, I, I, as everybody knows, there's just nothing like family, you know, it's like my, my core, my core is with the Titans always, you know, and you see that relationship with Dick and Bruce and how much that really means to me and how much that affects me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's mine. Either go, go run away and be a super villain or, or, um, stick with your family. <laughs> right on. Absolutely right. There you go, Jack. Thank you. That was a great question. I think we have time for one more. So let's see if we can go on on a really fun one. Yes. And this is going to come from Styles. Oh. What kind of superhero persona Ooh. would you create for yourself? Oh, that's a little similar to the superpower one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because now I'm like, all right, I want to be invisible. Like, if I want to be. Oh, yeah. I want the power of it. But also, what kind of hero would you be? Would you be the stalwart Wonder Woman Superman as character? Would you be the vigilante side of it, like Batman? Yeah, this is. Um, would... It's a lot of pressure to go all the way to the top when you're, you're at Wonder Woman's status. Like, that's it's a, it's a lot of pressure. Um, yeah. And it's nice to maybe be that sidekick, but then if I'm the sidekick, I've got to like have a boss. And so there's part of me that's like, just go big or go home. Go big or go I'll, home. I'll go up the top. I'd like to, then I'll be yeah. able to fly. So I want to be able to fly, become okay. invisible. I'd like, um, okay. and then I'm trying to think of like what other cools, but like, how am I defending myself? I can't just be invisible and do, do good. Like that's, that's not going to help anyone. Super strength is really awesome to have. I won't lie. Like any moments where like, like when Donna bends the gun, I'm like, yeah, I would love to be able to do this. <laughs> like that's incredible. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, I would want to be on on that level because, you know, at that point you're already doing all the same dangerous stuff as 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 you know if you're the sidekick. So I would create that kind of a persona, and I guess that's a boring answer, but clearly I'm gonna take everything no, Batman no. has. Wonder Woman. I'm on the woman side, but you can take the Batman side. <laughs> take the Batman side. I love Batman. Uh, the, the money, the gadgets, and the car. Yeah. I just have I've always liked Batman, even though he has a yeah. kid. So like this yeah. is I think a pretty easy question for me. Um, when my son Charlie was little, he called him Batman. Oh my gosh. How is Charlie? Charlie great? Yeah, he's awesome. Can you tell Charlie hi for me? I will. Yes, okay, good. Charlie's um, yeah, I don't know. I have a picture of me when I was literally, I think, three years old in a Batman costume. It's pretty cool how that like developed over time. So yeah, probably Batman for me. Mm -hmm. So are we? I'm I'm confused about the question. Are we choosing one that's already existing? Because if that is true, then the easy answer for me would just be Batgirl. Because I never actually got to be Batgirl, like sure. and, properly, like as you had should. experience. Um, and so many people have asked me when they're going to get to see me in the suit and blah, blah, blah. And anyway, I, I, will, I want that just as bad as. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. His back roll was rad. Heck yeah. Absolutely. And uh, we look forward to that. Thank you, Styles. Great question. And panelists, this has been an absolute delight. Any final words before we take our leave? Just thank you. Thank you. you. This is so fun. Our, our world and our show and being basically the source of, of, of why these things happen and why we get to play and do what we do. What she said. What Connor uh, said. What Connor uh, said. <laughs> <laughs> what she said. That's, that's, that's the it's motto true. of the day. Thank you. It's just you guys are awesome and so passionate and it's not uh, yes. unnoticed. It's been my absolute pleasure to serve you all today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual thank stage. You. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. And thank you for your great questions. Hope to see everybody again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Happy holidays. And remember, smiles are free. Spend them often. Yes. Yeah.